Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now. And now. Live from Austin, Texas. All right, this is a short five-minute segment. Jones. One more segment after that with William F. Jasper. We're going to cover other political topics. Get his take on what's happening in the Middle East. Ukraine. Politically here, domestically. But we have that clip I mentioned. Here's Obama. Candidate Obama saying... You can build a coal power plant, but we're going to set the price where it bankrupts you. You see, that's the power to tax is the power to destroy. That was uh, Webster said that. What, Noah Webster? The point is, is that this is what they're doing. But then they exempt themselves, the George Soroses, the, the, you know, the globalists, the General Electrics. They lobby for high taxes on you because they're exempt. McDonald's lobbies for Obamacare because they're exempt and... The local hamburger joint across the street isn't. I mean, don't you get it, folks? This is the ultimate form of discrimination. Here's Obama on the coal power plants. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. That will also generate billions of dollars uh -huh. that we can invest in solar, wind, sure, all your buddies. biodiesel. Where you've got them taking over the Bundys. The, the the only thing that I've said all right. with respect to coal, we're gonna, I've been some coal. We're going to go to what our guest now. Is, um, William F. Jasper, we got about three minutes left in this short segment, uh, finishing up with what's happening with the Bundys and where all this is going. Well, uh, uh, as I said in my, my current article on The New American, that there's <clears throat> more on the way. Uh, Harry Reid uh, made it very plain. He said this isn't over. Uh, they back, backed off. They're coming back. Uh, and not just against the Bundys, but against everybody else, not just in the West. Uh, that's where we're going to feel it the most because that's where the, the federal footprint and the boot on the neck is already most magnified. Uh, but all across the country, uh, President Obama made it very clear that he's going to use the EPA and other agencies to rule, to go around Congress if they won't uh, comply with them. But here's the thing. Uh, Congress is already uh, has uh, given up on this. Uh, Congress created all of these agencies. Uh, Congress appropriates their funds for them. Congress is responsible for overseeing them. It is not. Where were all the congressmen when, while this was happening out at the uh, Bundy Ranch? Uh, none of them came out there to interpose themselves as they're supposed to do. Brian, Governor Brian Sandoval did not. Go, uh, Sheriff Gillespie barely did and then ineffectually he only did enough just uh, to, uh, to give himself political cover um, the elected officials are supposed to be putting themselves between oppressive agencies and congress specifically should be abolishing these agencies or defunding them and particularly holding them accountable here and but congress is not going to do that if you and i and the rest of the american people do not demand it uh but the the the, the final thing here is uh this is being portrayed in the major media as uh outlaw uh, welfare ranchers taking advantage of the uh, public trust, taking advantage of the public lands, and that the BLM uh, is just doing its duty. And uh, we have to show them that this isn't the case. And I think the Hage case and the judge's ruling there, and there are many other cases uh, like that where after the damage has already been done, after the people have already been sent to jail, after they've been bankrupted, after the, the TV cameras move on and the New York Times, the LA Times and all the rest of them move on after they've already destroyed these people's reputations, then the, the truth comes out and we find out, oh, geez, these people really uh, weren't doing uh, what the uh, media claimed they did. The, the the victims, the property owners, were not the criminals here. It was the elected officials and appointed officials who were either committing crimes or were derelict in their duty in stopping those. This is so important. I want to come back to this briefly because think about it. Congress acts like they don't know what's going on. They're the ones letting this happen along with the president.
because there's a lot of money out there. They all want to be kingpins. They want the people off of it. They can all get a little slice like Harry Reid. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's Alex Jones. Coming to you from former Texas in FEMA Region 6. I'd like to get our state and country back. I am your host, Alex Jones. But this is a velvet tyranny, at least until now, to where unless you were being preyed on individually at the time, you didn't really notice it. William F. Jasper is our guest. He just brought up a federal judge's ruling from just last year in Nevada, saying kick the, these BLM people out of the jurisdiction. They were involved, quote, in a conspiracy against ranchers. I didn't even know about that ruling. And I was just reading even the mainstream news articles about it. And you realize this is the same BLM. There's, there's a reason they were able to run out 52 other families that were there since 1877. Because they put in regulations and harassment that are impossible to survive. And I think that's central. So I'm going to ask Kit Daniels to do a whole article pointing this out. Uh, but William F. Jasper, the editor of the New American Magazine, uh, put a bookend on this, and I've got some other topics I want to cover with you. Well, uh, this, is, this is very important because uh, we, we, we see it over and over and over again, and we're going to see it uh, repeatedly, not just with the Bundys, uh, but with others in similar cases. We saw it up here in north of me here in Idaho with the Sackett family. Uh, they're demonized in the press as being uh, uh, environmental criminals, eco-villains. 
And over and over again, you have all of the, the various environmental groups that come out and endorse the federal uh, hammer coming down on it. In fact, they say they're going to sue. That's what happened here in the, in the Bundy case. The Center for Biological Diversity threatened to sue the BLM if they didn't really uh, clamp down on the Bundys. And so that's part of this whole charade that goes on. They, the BLM wants to say that, oh, well, we're, we're just the good guys. We're being forced by, by a lawsuit to do this. And uh, of course, these environmental groups like the Center for Biological Diversity are being funded by the same people that are gonna benefit from this. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I'd like to end on something you mentioned earlier, and that is we have to be very careful because uh, I believe there are provocations being planned. You recall in uh, 1996, after the Oklahoma City bombing, Bill Clinton was on Air Force One with the press corps, and he said there that it was Oklahoma City that saved his presidency because after the 1994 elections, Congress had reacted against him just as, as the people had reacted against him and had elected a Republican Congress, including many conservatives, including my friend Helen Chenoweth, Helen Chenoweth Hage. Uh, and so he said, but the Oklahoma City bombing changed that. He said it uh, created a whole mind change in the country as people began to reflect on this and decided to come together. Now, it wasn't an admission that he was involved in bringing about the Oklahoma City bombing, but uh, we can go, go into that into another time. Uh, my very lengthy investigation of the Oklahoma City bombing showed there was very much uh, good evidence in that direction. Uh, a a uh, incident of this kind would certainly help, not us. It would help the uh, Obama administration. In fact, they're in deep trouble if they don't have that. In fact, I want to play this clip of Glenn Beck. Uh, this was uh, three years ago, right, right as he left Fox, saying they're going to stage a terror attack and blame it on me. Now, he spent a whole hour on this showing the quotes in their internal uh, fundraising uh, letters to billionaires and people, but they've also put it in a bunch of other publications. And so it's very thinly veiled that they're hoping for one of these uh, bare minimum. And then now Glenn Beck is saying the Liberty Tea Party is basically going to do stuff. And he's so scared, I guess he's throwing in with them because he's putting out the talking point that's directly, I watch it, White House to Media Matters to MSNBC to everybody else, and they admit they have weekly meetings, and what you see in Media Matters, nobody reads them. They're not important, except for the fact that it is directly run by the former White House transition chief. So when they speak and say, Alex Jones is going to cause violence, you know, and, and then have MSNBC say, I caused the Boston bombing, sure, there's no proof it's asinine, but it doesn't matter. It means that they're looking to frame us with me at the head of it. Let's go ahead and play this clip. How can the left win the country? Watch. Cabinets don't, don't really sell things. The president himself has to reconnect with the people. Remember, President Clinton reconnected through Oklahoma, yeah. right? And the president right because now, the he seems removed. And it wasn't until that speech that he re-clicked with the American public. Obama needs a similar, a similar kind of You think of words will work for... Obama needs a similar kind of event. Oh! Oh, like Oklahoma City. I will be the guy who causes the next Oklahoma City. This is in a letter, an appeal to advertisers uh, of Fox, dear Fox advertisers, read this part of it. No one, left, right, center, wants to see another Oklahoma City. The next assassin may succeed. If so, there will be blood on many hands. They are setting up another Oklahoma City. They are claiming that one is coming, and they've already marked the one who caused it. Let's stop. I will be the guy. Let's stop him. He, what he didn't tell you is in most of those letters and threats, the, I'm listed as well, along with the rest of the liberal uh, media. And when I say liberal media, we're Thomas Jefferson liberals, pro-gun, pro-constitution, pro-freedom. These people on the controlled right and left are the authoritarians. And I, I want you to have your comment on this, but, but the issue here is 
I'm not going to call Glenn Beck a Benedict Arnold. Okay, he does a lot of good work. I do not want to attack people that I'm seen as in competition with because I'm in competition with tyranny to try to restore liberty. I, I really wake up in the middle of the night, as I know you do, William, for my kids. I, I know this is a hardcore tyranny that's coming in. It's not just some boss hog thing or I wouldn't be fighting this hard. I wouldn't be risking my life if it wasn't so grave.